Hi. So in this video, we will learn about uh, gradient boosting. Uh, it's a machine learning algorithm that is quite uh, useful in many applications. Uh, boosting is a very popular way of, uh, you know, it, it's a popular way of combining uh, models to, you know, sort of improve performance. And gradient boosting is a type of boosting, you know, in one of the other video, we learned about ADA boosting, right? So boosting is, um, is is quite popular. It's 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 a type of uh, ensemble modeling actually, where you combine predictions from different uh, you know different uh, decision tree models. Um, so we will first uh, go through the basics of boosting, and we will then learn about uh, the gradient boosting in a bit more detail. Right? If you're doing uh, machine learning or you're doing data science and you know, you are just calling library. I think it's important to also understand the theory. I mean, you know, without even understanding theory, you can build a model. But then if something goes wrong, in order to investigate that in a in a proper way, you need to have proper understanding of the theory, right? In order to compare performance of models, you also need to un have good understanding of the theory. And hence, you must pay attention to the theory, not just the, you know, calling libraries and, you know, building model quickly. It does help. That's good. But should uh, you should have good understanding of theory as well and we will take um, we'll try to uh, understand what is boosting and what is gradient boosting in particular right so boosting is a way of combining weak classifier um, or, or regressor even right weak models a decision tree model is a weak model right what is a decision tree model right you have okay why do i plot a decision tree okay here right it's uh, something like this, right? Your decision tree model is like this. Easy to build, easy to explain, but uh, the problem with this model is that it's a weak model because the predictions are not that great, right? The prediction accuracy may not be very great with a decision tree. Uh, sometimes it can overfit, sometimes it can underfit, but the hypothesis behind boosting is that if you combine the results from many decision tree it is likely the performance is likely to be very good uh, and there probably won't be much of overfit or underfit okay and boosting relies on this hypothesis in fact models uh, like random forest also relies on the same hypothesis okay um, so the here is you know the, it's a simple way of you know improving model performance which is to say that build more than one model, not just one model, more than one. How many? It is up to you to decide. The more you build, the better will be the result. Of course, you will not build yourself. The package itself will do it for you. Any Python R package you're using will do it for you. But how many you want to build, that's something you can specify, right? All right. Um, so, <coughs> so the boosting is, is has a very simple idea, right? Uh, you have main population data. What you do is that you take sample data like this. You can take as many, let's say I've taken five of them, um, right? You choose the, you know, these observations randomly. That means you don't select, selectively just put. Any observation can be, uh, you know, selected multiple times also. So that's because it's randomly with a replacement, right? And then you fit decision tree to each one of these samples separately, right? Then you combine the results, right? And I'll tell you actually how to combine or how to aggregate the results. That's, you know, perhaps the most important part of this, right? And then you see actually whether the performance is good or not. You assess the performance, right? So that's the philosophy is, is very simple. You know, you have taken five samples, you can take even 500 samples, up to you. The more you take, the better is, is will be your model pre pre uh, prediction or the stability of the prediction will be better, right? There won't be much of variance. Right. And it can be used for both regression type problems as well as classification type problem. Let's take an example. Here is a classification type problem, right? You have, you know, you have to take se seven samples or samples, random samples uh, from the main sample of your data set. Uh, we have fit seven decision tree, right? And it's a classification type problem. You know, the idea is to predict whether someone has cancer or not. The first decision tree, so it has cancer. Second, so no, no, it's no cancer. And there are seven outcomes, right? Five of the cases, yes, cancer. Two of the cases, uh, non-cancer, right? So the answer is the maximum of that. You know? The final result is nothing but the maximum. And what is the maximum? Maximum is the five, right? Five is greater than two. And hence, we will say, no, the outcome is 
that someone has cancer right so it's a classification problem you have several trees deck the maximum votes imagine there were 100 trees right 100 trees 60 of them said yes there is cancer 40 no so what will be the final outcome this one so you take the maximum of that right okay in the case of regression type problem imagine you are trying to predict salary of someone right there will be several predictions right uh, but because it's a continuous value there will be many values right what you do is that the final outcome is simply the average of that the mean of that in this case it's about 75 right imagine you had used just one decision 300k right that would be way off than the actual good predict so taking the average you know improves the model prediction now gradient boosting or any boosting actually the boosting actually does rely on this sort of you know taking multiple sample and you know doing the predictions on this these samples and then aggregating the results but gradient boosting actually does it in a way that is different from other types of boosting ADA boosting for example we learned about ADA boosting where you have adjustment of the weight and it is done sequentially gradient boosting is also done sequentially that means you don't when you take this five sample you don't fit this entry at once you do it sequentially you, you start with this one then you know you, you do it sequentially uh, but but then it is done in such a way that you minimize the loss functions gradient with respect to the predictions made by the previous learner okay so what is the gradient gradient is nothing but change actually you know rate of change actually you know the, not rate of change but change with respect to something right so the change of what loss functions value so what is a loss function you know in machine learning you know that loss function is nothing but your uh, it's it's loosely speaking it's you know it's the realization minus prediction okay realize value or actual value minus the prediction actual value minus the prediction you can just say that okay something like that and you obviously you take the, do the squaring all of that but i'm not uh, going to go into the details of what is a loss function and all that but i'm sure you know this if you have learned done any machine learning right it's just that you know the error actually you know if you're coming from econometrics areas it's nothing but the error right so the error or the loss should be minimized actually right so that's the criteria used uh, while moving from one uh, learner to the other moving from one decision tree to the other right and it is also done sequentially so that's uh, different that's the difference actually between gradient boosting and uh, and adaptive boosting gradient boosting uh, has many types one famous gradient boosting is the xg boost algorithm right might have heard about it is quite popular among Kaggle in the Kaggle community and I think many people use it uh, how is it compared to you know other models such as logistic regression very similar uh, both can be used uh, for classification purpose but uh, gradient boosting can be used not just for classification but also for regression type problems so for both type problems uh, and it does much better performance compared to that of decision tree uh, and uh, also better performance uh, compared to logistic regression although not always right logistic regression is different type of sort of model it's a parametric model whereas uh, you know these are gradient boosting or any boosting model is a non-parametric model uh, so that's the difference otherwise you know a logistic regression is very popular in the statistic econometrics community uh, quite popular also in machine learning community but uh, People in statistics and machine learning, they don't use uh, boosting, bagging kind of model or random forest type models. Although popularity is, is, is uh, gaining there also. Uh, but yeah, the idea is to, you know, just combine weak learner or weak models to, you know, to com do the combining and do aggregating and to make, you know, better prediction thereby by the way this aggregation can also be used in other forms not just with decision tree you can also build many logistic regression and then combine right so the philosophy can be used uh, or can be replicated for other types of models such as logistic regression linear regression as well right how is it related to random forest well random forest is also a, an ensemble modeling where you take sub you know sub sample from the main sample and fill uh, and and you know fit uh, many decision tree then aggregate the results it's also exactly done 
uh but random forest uh, the, the 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 way you you know you you select the the features actually right to fit the decision tree is a bit different there and there is the different in uh, scikit learn in you can find uh, the the you know the uh, everything that you need in to build uh, a boosting model especially uh, um uh, you know a, a gradient boosting model there are various types of gradient boosting but you can use xgboost light gbm cat boost all this uh, you know to build a boosting model in r also you can do that you just use gbm package uh, you can use that to build a gradient boosting model uh, you know to assess performance of a gradient boosting model you know you can there are many ways to do it uh, obviously you can use the training test split and and build a model but you can also you know use cross validation techniques such as k fold leave one out etc um yeah and and for class you know if you and the matrix to be used is also important in fact the most important thing is to know which matrix to be used you can use uh, various types of matrix whether it's precision accuracy rate and and all that depending on the problem at hand for regression type problems is mean square error mean absolute deviation and all of that right so that's about the gradient uh, sorry gradient uh, boosting we will we'll also see actually how gradient boosting can be built in in uh, in python like some examples also to see thanks